Today, we're down here at John Kuthleitner's. It's just outside of Salem, Ohio, to take a look at this 1948 Fleetline Sportmaster four-door sedan. But before we take a look at this gorgeous example, a little background history of the Chevys offered in 1948. Before talking about the 48, we must go back and talk about the 42, because all the 48 cars are essentially carryover body design that started back in 1942. But right as the new Chevy bodies were being made, Japan attacked Pearl Harbor December 7th, 1941, and just like that, America was at war again. All car manufacturers had to halt civilian car production and help with the war effort. America was in World War II from 1942 to 1945. It is possible to find a 42 or 45 civilian model, though it's super rare. Getting back to the 1948 Chevys, the base Chevy model in 1948 was the Style Master Series, and it was available in four models, the Sports Sedan, Town Sedan, Club Sedan, and Business Coupe. Chevy touted an all-steel body construction, same performance across all the trim levels, with the only differences being side trim and finishes, as well as interior equipment. Moving up to the middle of the field trim for 1948, the Fleetline series, which offered two cars, the Aero Sedan, which was Chevy's best-selling car in 1948. They made around 211,861 units. The other option that you could get, the Fleetline Sportsmaster, which is the car we're featuring on the channel today, they made 64,217 of those. So based on those numbers, the Sportmaster is a lot rarer. They only made about a quarter of the Sportmasters versus the Aero Sedan. There's also one last trim level, and that was the Fleet Master Series. It offered two cars, the Town Sedan and the Five passenger coupe but in my opinion they should have been switched the fleet master should have been the fleet line and and vice versa because the fleet line has more glitz to it on the side there's way more trim but that's just my opinion what do you guys think in the comment section below okay getting back to the fleet line sports sedan base price was $1,492 in 1948 which would equate out to be $17,564.49 today the next few slides are accessories you could get when you ordered your 48 Chevy. The conversion rate that I found was $1 and $2022 was equivalent to $1177 and 1948 dollars. Okay, getting into the rear here. Just check out this door panel. This is all real wood. And just look how it curves up and to the door frame. Check out these rear vent windows. You have to open it here. And it's once it's open there, use the crank. That's classy. Don't put vent windows in the back anymore on auto automobiles. This is your door handle. This is the big window. And the windows go all the way down, which is really nice. Check out how much space you have back here. It's absolutely incredible got nice wood trim going across here this is real wood not that plastic crap that you get nowadays got rope to hold on to the floor is actually pretty flat there's only one little hump here for the drive shaft but it's actually relatively flat Check out that dome light. It's the opposite way of which it usually is. Check out that dashboard. We're gonna go up front and show you more. This is how much leg room you have sitting in the back. Feels like you're sitting in a cat on a couch. ashtray back here there's only one ashtray back here usually they're in the doors got a nice foot rest behind the seat here this is class and this is a Chevy 
place to hold on to there. This the roof is really high in this car. The roof is really high in this car. So I guess you could wear a top hat or a sun hat as you're driving down the road and not have any issues. Check out this door panel. You got a nice armrest. You have your door handle here. This is your window crank. You have vent windows up here in the front too. There's a pin that locks the vent window. Just move it off to the side here like that. And then you use the window crank to operate the vent window. And just make sure that this is secure. It's simple things like this that modern cars don't have. If you don't know what this is, this is the drip rail. So if it rains, the water hits this rail and it will run down here. So if you have to have the windows open, say like it's a summer day, or you know, it'll hit here and come down. If it's raining and it's a summer day, the rain won't get you all wet because it's coming down. If it's pouring down rain, you will still get wet with the windows open. It's more or less for like dew or water that is on the car. It will go like a gutter off the car. That's a two piece windshield. That's why this chrome piece is here in the center. It's two individual pieces of glass. I just noticed this while the door was open. I don't know what all that's about, like why why it goes in like that. It's almost like a handle. There's so much chrome on this car. So this is a three speed stick. It's got, uh, it's three on the tree. You shift it with this it's a column shifter. Here's a here's our key situation. These are reproduction keys. But here's the uh, key cylinder. Everything is Art Deco in this car, just like this period it came from. It's very Art Deco. Forgot to mention what this knob does. And this knob, when you push this down, it it releases the cow vent or the air conditioning. I honestly don't know why they got rid of that feature. It's one of the best features. And um, to be honest, like you can have that open and all the windows up and it will be cold inside the cabin and you don't have any of the wind noise that you get with all the windows down or the turbulence. It's got a screen to catch all the bugs so the bugs don't get sucked into that. So getting into the trunk, the trunk lid is really heavy. You got a full size spare there. Just check out all that space you have. So the trunk will hold itself whenever it hits this little lever here. This almost looks like the same exact strut used on a 67 Corvette later on. So check this out. It's 1948 and there's turn signals. So that's a pretty cool touch. This is a Chevy. Okay, while we're up here, let's talk engines. The only engine that was offered and 48 was the uh, 216 cubic inch displacement blue six, which dates clear back to 1929. It's also known as the stove bowl six or the Babbitt buster. If you are new to classic Chevy, Chevy took a different path and went overhead valve. Most other manufacturer went with the flathead design. With the overhead valve design, the valves are on top of the engine as opposed to the flathead where the valves live inside the engine. By 1950, the 235 inline six came out 
and it had a pressurized oil system. If you look at any older vehicle, uh, especially Chevys, the uh, oil pressure gauge only goes up to 30 pounds of pressure, which is really, really low because the oil pressure system wasn't a pressurized oil system with all the older six cylinders. So like from the six cylinders from 1929 up till even 1948, anything that had a 216 in it or anything equivalent to that had a splash lube oil system where the, the sometimes the Babbitts would Sometimes the Babbitts didn't get the lubrication they needed, hence the term Babbitt Buster. 235 had a pressurized oil system, so all was well past that point. That's the perfect segue to what is under the hood of this 48 Chevy. It is a 235 inline straight six cylinder. Lots of car guys will switch out. They'll get rid of the 216 and put in a 235, it's, in a, it's a vast improvement or upgrade. It also offers a little bit more horsepower. The 216 came with 90 horsepower. This engine produced anywhere between 100, maybe 120 horsepower, depending on what year you got. The only transmission that was available in 1948 was a three-speed manual synchro mesh unit. It had a vacuum assist. It was three-speed on the column. And third gear was direct drive. I just wanted to show you real quick what this car looks like without wheel covers and what it looks like with wheel covers. What do you guys think? I personally like the wheel covers on there better. It gives it more of a streamlined look, but what do you guys think in the comments section? Okay, on to the pros and cons section. I'm taking all these pros and cons from a book that I have that has all these classic cars in it. So if you have an issue with the pros or cons, I didn't come up with this list. I'm taking it right out of a book that has all the classic cars in it from 1930 up till 2000 and it's been out of print from probably 2000 till now or whatever but here here's what they say is they say it's relatively uh, th these are the pros relatively plentiful wide availability of parts and mechanical parts strong club activity and interest the pro or the cons it's common. I don't think they're as common now as they were in the 2000s. So that's speculatable and slow to appreciate, slower to appreciate than the uh, 41 and 42 models. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you have any stories about these cars, post your stories in the comment section. I love reading about them and I'll respond to all comments of substance. This channel is finally starting to grow. Please, let's keep it growing. So if you could hit that like button, subscribe if you dig the content, hoping one day that this channel will be one of the classic car go-to channels for the weird and often overlooked classic cars with new stuff sprinkled in. And like I said, guys, I appreciate all the support. Thank you guys so much. And until next time, toodaloo!